Just look at that. Life. Nature. My family and I are fortunate enough to have a creek and a green belt behind our house. Teeming with life. From soft-shelled turtles to egrets that come and visit us. As well as ducks sometimes. And of course you can hear the Carolina Wren singing its song. I'm greeted with that every morning. You do get, occasionally get blue jays and cardinals as well. The older I get, the more I feel connected with nature. And I love that feeling. Look at this guy. Black and yellow butterfly. Interesting fact about butterflies. Do you know they taste with their feet? So when a butterfly lands on you, it's actually tasting you. Weird fact, I know, but they're also pollinators as well as they help in the decomposition process. But this isn't a channel about butterflies. This is a channel about gardening. And today, we're going to talk about raised bed gardening. Hello, my urban gardeners. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, no worries. If you have a love for plants and you have a love for nature and vegetable gardening, then you're in the right place. We love raised bed gardens here at Urban Garden and Gray. Reason being is because they are miniature ecosystems that you have the control over. So, fellow stewards of the land, let's learn how to create a raised bed garden together. I'm playing. So before we start talking about the practical steps into how to create your raised bed garden, let's talk about the reason why it's a beneficial uh, option for beginner gardeners. First and foremost, it's improved drainage. Raised beds allow excess water to drain easily, preventing waterlogging and root rot. Not to mention better soil quality. By using a raised bed, you have complete control over the soil composition. You can add nutrient-rich soil and compounds and amendments to create an optimal growing environment. Additionally, it helps with weed control. Raised beds minimize the intrusion of weeds, making it easier for beginner gardeners to maintain a neat and organized garden. Then you also have to factor in ease of access. Depending on the construction of the raised bed, it can actually negate some of the bending over that might be required with perhaps a traditional garden. Then there's always the thought of the fact that you might have a longer growing season with a raised bed because essentially the soil is warmed up faster in the spring and it stays warmer longer in your fall and sometimes your winter months. So now it's time to pick a perfect spot for a raised bed garden. There are three things that you need to factor in when you're picking your location for your raised bed. One is access to sun. Remember, plants need sun for photosynthesis. Second thing is accessibility. You don't want to create a raised bed in a place that's going to be hard for you to access. And then third, and probably one of the most important, is your access to water. You want to make sure that you have a place that gets good access to water. Water, essential to your garden, essential to your plants, essential to life. But unfortunately here in the South, what a long call means water, comes with Speedos. But luckily, I have something for those Speedos. presented with the awesome opportunity of presenting to you the solution to all of your mosquito and flying insect problems. This is the Professional Bug Zapper by Careland and x -Pet. This powerful device is equipped with all features you need to combat mosquitoes, fungus gnats, wasps, moths, fruit flies, and other pests lurking in your home and your growing area. I don't know about you, 
but hearing the snap, crackle, and pop of mosquitoes as 1800 volts is sent through their little bodies in milliseconds is soothing to me. I despise mosquitoes. So now it's time to build your raised bed. Well, what do I build my raised bed out of? Honestly, the option is yours. Remember, gardening can be a habit that can be expensive if you allow it to be. So there is a plethora of different things and options that you can go with. You can go with galvanized steel because I believe galvanized steel is actually the trending uh, way of building a raised bed right now. But they are expensive. There's also cedar boxes that you can make them out of. The reason why people choose cedar boxes is because cedar is a rot resistant wood. Remember, resistant. It can still rot, but it's a rot resisting wood, resistant wood, and then plus cedar has uh, uh, insect repellent uh, properties as well. So you can always go with cedar, but cedar also can be as expensive as well. The main thing is when you're picking your materials for your raised bed is try to go in a cost effective method that um, that works for you. That's just the truth of the matter. Go with what option works best for you. If you don't have the time to actually build your raised bed and you want something that's prefabricated, there's a plethora of different big box stores and online locations that will provide you with the option of being able to just put a raised bed down. But if you're kind of like me, a little bit of a DIYer, you can easily go a less expensive route. For instance, this box behind us, this was actually made out of cedar fence planks. Cedar fence planks, it's one, it's still cedar, but two, it doesn't cost as much as, for instance, a uh, 10 by 10 uh, cedar plank might cost because it's fence planks. And usually when you're buying them, you're buying them in, in, in large quantities, so the big box stores don't charge as much for them yet. But you can easily make a raised bed garden out of those same fence planks. I think for a six foot plank, it was about $3. So I got several of those fence planks, cut the dog ears off the end of them, squared them off and built it myself. But hey, great, I'm not handy. Don't worry, there's an option for you too. So a less expensive and possibly a less DIY route might be just by using cinder blocks. Cinder blocks easily can be stacked on top of each other and side by side to create the desired shape that you're looking for. And then the bonus is that you can grow inside the cinder blocks as well. One of my good gardening friends, Gardening with Stacy, uh, does this all the time out in Jamaica. I'll make sure to put a link to her channel in the uh, description so you can go check her out as well. So one more thing to consider when picking your materials is for instance, if you decide to go with lumber, make sure it is a non-treated lumber. Reason being is because the chemicals that's used in the pressure-treated lumber uh, actually can leach into your soils and end up putting those chemicals in your plants, which in turn will put those chemicals in you. So make sure that it's untreated lumber that you're building your raised bed out of. But the next thing to consider is your depth. Remember, most of your plants are gonna benefit and just adore having something that's at least 8 to 12 inches in depth. For instance, plants such as your sunflower, they need at least about a good 2 feet of depth so that those roots can get really down in there and anchor themselves down because you're going to have a plant that can get 6 to 12 inches, excuse me, 6 to 12 feet in height. Not to mention if you're trying something that's a bit so ambitious as to try to grow corn. Plants like this that like to go vertical, they need a soil that's deep enough for them to root themselves. So, all right, my beginner gardeners. Now you've picked your location, you have access to water, adequate sun, you've got your materials, you've got your depth. What do we fill our raised bed with? Ha, <laughs> it's the million dollar question, right? Well, first thing I like to do is I like to start with a base layer of cardboard or newspaper at the bottom of the bed. The reason why is this actually acts as a natural weed barrier for it. Plus, it helps with moisture retention, and then that cardboard is gonna break down to carbon, which is going to uh, definitely benefit your plants. Next, this is where you're gonna to wanna to start adding in your compost, your organic materials, and I actually have do have videos about compost, and I'll make sure to post a link to it. Next, you wanna add in your soil mixture. 
your soil. <laughs> Again, remember, gardening can be expensive. You can easily go and create your own soil. Well, I say easy, but it actually takes a lot of time and dedication to start creating your own soil by breaking down leaves and organic matter and composting. But you can always go a slightly more expensive right, route excuse me, of purchasing soil. Now you can purchase soil by the bag from any of your big box stores. Usually, on average, you're talking about eight to ten dollars per bag for about two cubic foot. I actually mentioned this in previous videos. The least expensive route would be buying soil by the truckload, if that's the route you want to go. Now, the soil mixture that you're looking for should be a garden soil, which is going to be dense with uh, your wooded material, your compost, and so forth. You can easily amend this soil by adding in some vermiculite and some perlite to help with the, uh, the drainage. So you've established your soil and now here comes the fun part. Now it's time to add in your seedlings. Add in all those plants or hey maybe you don't want to start with seedlings. Maybe you want to go the more organic route and start from seeds. That's the best way to go. If you're going to start from seeds you can sow these seeds directly into your soil. The next step is going to be adding weed barrier and your mulch. Oh, these part. There we are. Now, sometimes what I like to do when breaking these roots apart is just kind of dunk it in water a little bit. But I forgot to do that, so here we are. There we are. All right, we got one of our better boys here. What I'm gonna do is sprinkle a little bit of brooding hormone to ease that shock, as you guys know I like to do. Tap that in that hole there. And then I'm gonna place this better boy tomato right in this hole. As you can see, I don't use gloves and such. I mean, I mean gardening's all about getting one's hands dirty, right? If you ain't getting dirty, you ain't doing it right would have been told. Now once you have your soil mixed in, what I like to top my garden off with is going to be one, a little bit of weed barrier. And as I dig down in this mulch, let's see how dang, ah oh, yeah, there we are. There we are. See, that's weed barrier right there. The reason why I have that is not so much for the weeds. This is actually more to prevent certain presence like squash vine borers. Then I take the whole entire thing and I pack it down with mulch. This mulch helps cool the soil off in the hot, hot summer months that we get here in Texas. And plus it helps retain that moisture so you don't have to water as much. Because even though we're creating this micro ecosystem, we also wanna be mindful of how much water we're using. So, and plus it saves your work in the long run. Oh, look at this broccoli. It's already got some flowers, uh, some florets on it. And there you have it, my fellow stewards of the land. You just now created your first raised bed garden. Be proud of yourself. Congratulate yourself. Because this is no small feat. You're providing something back to the earth. And that's amazing, isn't it? And plus, raised beds, or any kind of gardening for that matter, is so therapeutic for the soul. But there are more advanced steps that you can look into. Like, for instance, adding in irrigation, um, uh, adding vertical gardening like trellises and so forth but we'll get to those steps in maybe another video so the next and most important step you've created this wonderful beautiful life in your raised bed garden is going to be maintaining it making sure that you're adequately watering making sure that you're fertilizing your plants and then comes the most important part of all being able to harvest the fruits of your labor of course, there's more things that you can add to your raised bed garden to amplify your gardening potential. For instance, like coming up with unique ideas for trellising for your plants to vine and climb up. Perhaps even training your plants to go in a certain path that you want them to follow. But now that you've created this raised bed garden, the possibilities are endless. It's all on you. So today we talked about how to start your own raised bed garden, as well as how to fill it and maintain it, all on a modest budget. If you found any of this information beneficial or helpful, consider sharing it with a friend or even subscribing to the channel. That's it for us here at Urban Gardening with Gray. Remember, 
enjoy life, enjoy family, and enjoy your garden. Thanks for watching.